and welcome to Reads Reads, Spider-Man Crawl Space Edition. Come check us out at thespidermancrawlspace.com. I'm here to talk about, of course, two wonderful Superior Spider-Man issues this week. Uh, we'll talk, of course, about Superior Spider-Man 17 first, which actually was the kickoff for the new Spider-Man 2099. First of all, for the pros, I really enjoyed this issue. Um, just having Miguel O'Hara back has just been fantastic. I was a big, huge fan of the Spider-Man 2099. Just before I got back into comics, back in the mid-90s, actually, I was checking out the series by P Peter David, and after that, I just, you know, got into the character. I, I was just, Dan Slott actually did a great job reintroducing him without going over anything too crazy, from the references to the language for 29, and he just made you get into the character, and actually, when we get to the present, actually, it's well done. I mean, this is the first time in a while we actually have been seeing Otto uh, being Peter in a normal Every day, I mean, I love the baseball game with uh, Horizon Labs and everything with Marie McCone and everything else. And then, of course, when everything happens with the buyout, thanks to Ty Stone, using Liz Allen Osborne uh, as the protagonist for this for this storyline is actually really good. Um, I don't have much else to say on that because I mean it was really enjoyable, especially the reasons why you know the two Spider Mans come into conflict over the time shift and everything else. And I also have to agree, I really, really just enjoyed the artwork by Ryan Stegman. Not just because my name's Ryan too, but I it's just his artwork was fantastic. Even the little parts of the Green Goblin subplot yeah, when him uh, hurting uh, Phil Urich, it just it just works really well artwork wise. Everybody just looks fantastic. If Ryan Stegman ever got together with Peter David and relaunched Spider Man twenty ninety nine. I would pick this series up. Forget it. I would be there. Uh, cons. Very minor cons. Um, besides the reference to uh, Age of Ultron, so the time, uh, broken time issues that's been happening in all the Marvel books, I, that's not a problem or anything else. And actually, there are some moments here really good. I think the only thing that's really interesting about is how Ty Stone has been represented for the last year and a half about this crazy nerd who's not getting his own way and working for the Kingpin, and now he's working for, you know, Alan Chemicals, which is Liz Osborne's, you know, new company and everything. Um, it, it's interesting, but at the same time, it's a nice twist about him being actually the grandfather of Spider-Man 29 because of all the storylines and everything. So um, it's really good, but after all that, I'm just going to give this uh, issue a, a solid A. It was really enjoyable. I can't wait for the next two parts about this. Um, welcome back, Spider-Man 2099. And on that, we'll move right on over to, of course, uh, Superior Foes of Spider-Man number three. Um, pros, the book is great. I mean, it's following at all cylinders. Um, everything with the, the tales of about um, what Boomerang's been doing and his involvement here with Abe Jenkins, now Mach 7, the former Beatle, and his former partner. I mean, it just works really good as a storyline. And I love the interaction between uh, Overdrive and the new Beatle um, with Maria. And it's... It's just great, but I think the funniest thing is this this book's got such great humor in it, especially when you talk about, you know, Silvermane's head and the real reasons behind everything. I like the fact that Boomerang's kind of starting to get a little in over his head if he powered the pun and everything. Um, very little con on this one as well. Um, it, it, I think the most is we need to see where the story's going to go with the Shocker knowing the subplot, but I think we need just a little bit more, like, um, from Overdrive and the, and the new Beetle and maybe a little bit more from Speed Demon and everything. I mean, I know we're coming up with origin issues for both characters a little bit more and everything, but, you know, I just want to see just a little bit more of their motivation outside their uh, petty obsessions and they got powers and or somebody gave them powers and they just kind of got a little crazy. But otherwise, that I'm giving that an A+, an a plus because it was really great. It really was. Spirit Foes of Spider-Man is just doing fantastic. I pray this title makes it because it's really really good and on that note um, people were asking me the other day how I feel about the new Venom series and since I was following it and enjoying it quite a bit um, I'm very sad to see it go but um, I'm going to actually do a full Venom series review in a couple months once the title ends just before we get to Dark Territory coming up in November in Superior Spider-Man so wait for that in the meantime Please come check us out at the Spider-Man Crawl Space. Please come check out my blog at Comics Havoc. Um, I'm actually getting ready to start working on my graphic novel. If anybody's interested, uh, send me information or any questions, and I'll answer that really well. In the meantime, I will see you.